With our 30 by 40 Barnuminium livable, it's time to turn our attention to the next big thing, a massive off-grid solar battery array that will power everything we could ever want. For this project, we're gonna think a little out of the box, or should we say, in the box. It's time to bury a shipping container. I have done quite a bit of research and I haven't been able to actually find cases of people either successfully or unsuccessfully burying containers. And so then I wonder if that's because when most people bury containers that they don't want you to know they're there. <laughs> so we're just kind of making this up and I think it's going to work. If it doesn't work, we'll let you know. I think I found rock. That's not going to work. Try right here. We'll try over here. Are you intentionally missing? Is that a real question? <laughs> I feel like you usually have better aim than that. quite go as I imagined, but I still think it's going to keep the container from being able to move. So overall, I think successful. Time to put the drain pipe in. What are you doing, Courtney? I am Googling whether or not the holes go up or down because it's only partially perforated. Totally opposite of what I thought it was going to be. The holes actually go down. Do you kind of feel like you're between a rock and a hard place? <laughs> That's pretty funny. So when I was excavating for the pad up here, I put all the small rocks, basically all the rocks I could, up here up the hill. Now I'm gonna have to figure out how to get the excavator up there and try to gently push them back here to backfill this thing. We're using a bunch of rock because that's gonna help allow the water to drain through and then out our pipe so we don't trap a bunch of wet dirt onto the backside of the container. That's actually working really well. Does this look as sketchy as it feels? Yeah. We're gonna go peek inside the container and see how bad the damage is so far. Oh gosh. Okay. Oh, no problem. But it hasn't even moved at all. I don't think it's yeah. I don't think it's done anything. Ooh, it's warm it up. I think it's working. You're just having fun. <laughs> I'm definitely having fun. I think Riley's stakes are working because it, the container actually just moved quite a bit on this corner that we weren't able to get staked. Just 
started raining. Well guys, just like that we have a partially buried container. It actually worked pretty well. It moved a little bit where we couldn't stake it, but looks good. Now I'm on the roof of the container. Oh man. The view, if you thought the view from the ground was good up here, the view from the roof of the container is amazing. Riley is headed back up. This side is just going to get partially buried and then our generator will be going over here. Oh my gosh, this shipping container is buried in the hillside. It didn't really collapse. It didn't really move. So far, it seems like a total success. I don't know what's gonna happen over the years as it gets rained on and gets wet, but we're gonna find out. We went kayaking yesterday and there are homes where the retaining walls in the water are made of Corten. And it kind of got us thinking like, if those hold up, why wouldn't this hold up? It's probably not gonna hold up forever, but we're okay with that. And if we can get 10 to 20 years out of it, I think that's awesome. I think we're gonna call it good for today because the storm is, the rain is rolling in, but I think the next step will be to start working on our solar racking, which is really exciting. Tomorrow I'm headed down south to pick up some materials for that. See you tomorrow, guys. I'm gonna climb on it. From the ground to the container. <laughs> Ooh, this make a good deck. I know, our solar panels are gonna have an amazing view. headed south to go pick up the rest of the materials that we need to finish our solar panel installation. There is only one problem though, which is that one of them is 40 feet long. So these pieces of steel I-beam I needed, I was only able to find 40 footers in stock. So I'm actually gonna have to cut them in half right here in the parking lot. I brought the Sawzall and the generator and I hope these guys don't get too upset with me. <laughs> I think it's gonna work. The beams cut in half, got them loaded on the trailer, everything tied down. Those guys were actually pretty cool about that, all things considered. Um, for whatever reason, I was able to get 40 foot beams in just a couple of days, but the 20 footers were like three weeks to a month out, and uh, and they weren't able to cut them there in house for me. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna bring this on and cut them myself. It all worked out in the end, definitely kind of a pain though. Down. You guys, you think it would get old by now, but it never gets old. Getting new building supplies and starting a new project is, it just feels like Christmas.
unfortunately it looks like this beam is bent. I don't know if that happened in my cutting it in the yard escapade or if it came that way. I do have a sneaking suspicion it came that way due to the way they transported it on their truck. At this point, we're just gonna have to deal with it. I think we're gonna try to straighten it out using the excavator. With our container successfully buried, it's time to get to the racking that's gonna hold the solar panels. We're using the six inch I-beam and we're gonna build a rack that's gonna hold 24 of our 32 panels at an angle like that on the side of the container. And we're also gonna be able to tilt it for the seasons. So we'll have a, a less tilt during the summertime and more tilt during the wintertime. That's gonna allow us to maximize the input through these panels. I'm really looking forward to doing this project because it's been a while since I've done any welding and I've been itching to try out our new Miller 220. Wish me luck with this no-name hole saw. That one of those get what you pay for kind of things? It's definitely a get what you pay for kind of thing. I found that a little bit of WD-40 on the hole saw really helps to keep it from chattering on steel. Moment of truth is, does the two and a half inch pipe fit inside the three inch pipe? According to the dimensions on the internet, it should, but I've never worked with pipe before. Oh yeah, cool. The two and a half sleeved inside the three is, gonna ha is how we're gonna make our pivot assemblies for our pivoting solar array. Now we need to figure out how to get the whole thing square and get all of the beams in the right spot. A bit difficult because where we're working is not square or level or straight or flat <laughs> or... It's the dirt. How did you get back there? Are you stuck? I think you wanted to be back there. We'd like to thank EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. Courtney and I have been relying on EcoFlow products to power our home now for more than six months, and the results have been impressive. The backbone of our system is the EcoFlow Delta Pro, which has 3,600 watts of inverter capacity and 3,600 watt hours of battery capacity. Not only is the Delta Pro powerful enough to run all of our tools, including our welder, it also has ample battery capacity to keep our home powered 24-7. The 220 watt portable bifacial solar panels offer a convenient and silent way to charge up our Delta Pro. And if the battery starts running low, we have the smart generator set up to automatically turn on. My favorite feature is the EcoFlow app. All of our EcoFlow gear is Wi-Fi connected, which allows us to monitor the charge state, power output, and even fuel level of the generator from anywhere in the world. I can start the generator with just a swipe of my finger, even if I'm not at the property. The weather is heating up and we're staying cool with our new super efficient Wave portable air conditioner. The add-on battery gives us up to eight hours of runtime, keeping us cool all day in the army truck or all night in the camper. So if you're in the market for any of these products, EcoFlow is running a huge promo for Prime Day with up to $900 off select products. Check out the links in the description below to find out more about EcoFlow products and the Prime Day promotion. And thanks again to EcoFlow for sponsoring this video. And now it's time to set up our very high-tech mobile welding rig. I 
think it should work on its side. I think it's gonna work. Guys, we're really excited. We got this Multimatic 220 over the winter and we used it for one project where we built our bathroom vanity and then it has just been sitting taunting us. So we are really excited to put it to work again and keep testing this thing out. We've got our solar panels and our EcoFlow Delta Pro and an extension cord all the way over here. Ideally, we'd be welding this thickness with the welder set up with 220 volt, but we don't have anything 220 volt up here to power it with. So we're gonna make do with 110 volt. And that's actually something I really like about this welder is that you can do you can choose either 110 or 220, which means that we can use it anywhere on the property. And once we get our big power system set up, we'll have 220 in the shop for the welder. Now that we've got this beam welded, it's time to get the next two beams done. We know that this one isn't gonna move now, and we're gonna make sure that the next ones are parallel and square to this one. This is a portable bandsaw. This is like one of the second or third fabrication tools I ever bought and it is awesome. This tool makes cutting stuff so much quieter, faster and less messy than using a grinder. Um, plus you get more precise cuts out of it. Highly recommend getting a portable band if you're new to fabricating. These are actually fence posts that I picked up at the local hardware store. They are about eighth of an inch thick steel. It was actually, believe it or not, way cheaper than buying raw material from the steel supplier. Plus they're galvanized and they already have holes in them and they're the perfect shape for mounting our solar panels too. There's also a secret feature that these are gonna add to our array. You'll have to find out about that one later. the cart inside of our array. <laughs> Courtney, <laughs> dang it. I guess it's staying there forever. Take two. Guys, we are figuring this out as we go. And as usual, you get to come along for the ride. Time to move our solar array onto our container. What could go wrong? Hold. Okay, we're gonna see what happens. Okay, now you're gonna drive and I'm gonna walk with it. <laughs> It's a lot of responsibility, but you're not going to stand under it, right? No, I'm going to stand next to it unless I need to stand under it. <sighs> okay, Courtney said it would be safer if I run so that I'm under it for less time. Is this kind of like running with scissors?
it stopped recording. Virtually nothing. job. Thanks. Yeah, I'm stoked. I can't believe how well that worked. That like wasn't, it wasn't even stressful. Except for when Riley had to run under it to get the logs out. It's also more rigid than I expected yeah. it to be. I thought we were going to have to add a lot more bracing, but I don't know that we have to, so. This is exciting. Upgrade to the mobile welding rig. Watch this stump. Crazy driver. I'm a little bit nervous to go down this hill because I don't know how well my brakes are going to work. You got it. Looking good. What do I do if I can't stop? Jump off. Whose idea was this? Yours. You definitely had a tire off the ground. Oh God, that was too fast. Why did you go so fast? That wasn't fast. That was like nothing. <laughs> Do you ever think you'd park a four wheeler on a container? Oh man. I think that's good. That was actually a lot easier to get lined up than I thought. The only thing we need to do now is slide the whole system over a little bit and then finish welding those hinges on. Nice. Yep, keep going. Babe, that's excellent. Keep going. Now I'm gonna use this 3 16 flat bar to gusset this hinge because we don't want it breaking off and our whole array falling off the container. Now that we've got it centered on the container and exactly where we want it, I'm gonna weld these little sleeves on and that's gonna keep this thing from being able to slide left and right. All right, got all five hinges welded on and I think it's now officially time to put the, take the excavator off and see what happens. Hopefully the whole container doesn't just flip over. We built the pivot points into not quite the center. That way there's actually more weight on the top than the bottom of this. And there's a really good reason that we did that. But as soon as we let that excavator off right now, this entire thing's gonna wanna flip back. So I'm putting these straps on to keep it from moving. Keep going. Now go down a little.
we got the entire array built now. All the beams are done, all the crossbars are done. The next step is to figure out a way to support this thing. I bought these telescoping sign poles that I think are gonna be a great way to help support this entire structure and keep it adjustable for the seasons. So using the website pvwatts.nrel.gov, I was able to determine what our ideal angles are. So during the winter time, our ideal angle is 65 degrees. And during the summertime, our ideal angle is closer to 25 degrees. We're gonna get a big boost in output, especially in the winter time by being able to adjust this array. So this is the winter tilt angle. Now I'm gonna go all the way back to the summer tilt angle and we're gonna make sure that we've got the 25 degrees that we're looking for before I finish welding the rest of these on. I didn't quite think of that. We're only at 33 degrees because the hinge interferes with this tube sliding all the way in. I think the easiest solution is actually just gonna to be to move the pivot point down a little bit and trim the hinge a little bit shorter. Um, overall, I'm really happy with how this is coming out though. picked up this boat trailer winch at Harbor Freight and the idea is that it's going to get mounted down below here so that when I pull the pins up top I can use the winch to adjust the angle. If you remember when I drilled the holes for the pipe that goes all the way through I drilled that hole off center. The top of this assembly is actually heavier than the bottom so it naturally wants to fall backwards which means that the winch will always be in tension and I can use the winch to go up and down. So now if I go and undo the bolts up top, it shouldn't want to fall, I think. Guys, that wasn't very convincing. He wants me to stand down here. This one do this. It can't fall on me, so that's good. Oh, it got tight down here. All right. So then all we have to do is put the three bolts back in the three supports and we're in winter mode. To switch to summer mode. I think that was his cue for me to put it in summer mode. Riley. solid. <laughs> Definitely solid enough for some solar panels. Guys, just like that, we have the framework for a solar system that we can change with the seasons. I'm stoked with how this is coming together. It's one of those ideas that seemed like it was going to work in my head, but until we ha actually had it put together, it was really hard to know. And it's it worked better than I expected, to be honest. You guys had decided that this thing was Cheeto colored, and I'm looking forward to the next part of the project, which is going to be hiding the Cheeto color. Stay tuned for next time when we get the rest of this project wrapped up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.